The Bloomberg Billionaires Index is a mandatory reference point for how people are making fortunes. And among the top 10 billionaires, there's a high concentration of wealth being created in one particular industry sector. Can you guess what that sector is? Yes, it's technology. And eight out of the 10 world's wealthiest billionaires made their fortunes in this particular sector. And today's ETF battle is an audience requested triple header between ETFs focused on this exact same industry sector. That's technology. This is going to be good. Stick around. You're watching ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. Welcome to the program. If you're new to our channel, a warm welcome. And be sure to subscribe to ETF Guide TV. And if you like us, show us with your thumbs up. You can also watch our shows like this one on major streaming platforms beyond YouTube. Check us out on Apple TV along with Amazon Fire TV and Roku. If there's a certain ETF battle you'd like to see, send me your ETF tickers in the comment section below or on our X feed at ETF Guide. Also, be sure to visit the description section. I've got links to our program judges. Also, we've got a link to our program sponsor direction. And finally, lots of viewer resources with download links to ebooks and other goodies, so don't miss it. Today's audience requested ETF battle is from a user named Grossero Media, and it's between technology sector funds from Fidelity, BlackRock, and Vanguard. And when we think about technology, it encompasses so many themes from AI to blockchain to data storage and so forth. And the tech sector is and has created some incredible wealth. So I guess it's only fitting that we would take a closer look at ETFs tracking this sector. So thank you, Grossero Media, for this battle suggestion. Helping us to sort through it is Shana Sissel with Banrian Capital Management and Dave Durking with the Street dot com judges great to see you again thanks for joining us thank you so much for having me ron thanks for having me back so our four battle categories and we're going to blaze through them one at a time our cost exposure strategy performance and mystery a mystery of course is where you our judges can pick a single or multiple factor uh, that you think is crucial to today's contest you can also nominate wildcard etfs if you feel there's better choices somewhere else or you can offer split decisions I've got the scorekeeping chores, and I will be keeping track of it right to the last moment. And at the very end, we'll declare an overall winner. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. Let's kick things off with the first category, cost. Dave, please get us started. Uh, well, we'll eliminate IGM right off the bat at 41 basis points. It's, it's far and away the most expensive of these three funds. Between the other two, the Fidelity Fund's at eight basis points, Vanguard's at 10. Uh, spreads are, are fine across the board on all three of these funds. They're, they're very tradable and uh, have uh, good liquidity to them. This is just going to be one of those rare categories where Vanguard doesn't win on cost. I'm going to go with Fidelity based on the expense ratio on this. That's a strong start. Thank you, Dave. Shana, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to cost? I generally agree with Dave, and uh, this is the world's most boring battle, so I'm going to spice it up a little bit and be like, what is going on with BlackRock? Why on earth does an iShare have a 41 uh, basis point expense ratio when it has $44.5 billion of assets? Like, it's crazy to me. I, I would never think that iShares would be so substantially more expensive, especially given that it has a lot of assets. We We've done battles before with other BlackRock funds that have like no assets with very low expense ratios in categories that are way harder to trade. So I am baffled by their 41 basis point expense ratio on this particular product. Um, Fidelity has eight basis points, Vanguard's at 10. I got, I, maybe the information I pulled from was a little different. There was some weird spread stuff going on with the Vanguard fund. Uh, it has substantial assets at 67 billion and versus Fidelity at a, just under 10. Um, but overall, when I look at the spread, the assets, the actual expense ratio, Fidelity wins out on this one for sure. That takes us next to exposure strategy. Shana, you're still up, so break it down for us. So as I pointed out, this is the world's most boring battle ever because two of these funds are the same fund. So Fidelity and Vanguard are the exact same 
fund. They are both uh, passively managed, replicating the exact same index, which is the MSCI uh, IMI US uh, 2550 information tech. I, like it's very complicated. It has to do with like tax and revenue code, uh, this 2550 thing, but they're both doing the same thing. They have the exact same holdings and the exact same weightings and virtually identical performance. So they're like the same fund. So we're just going to set those two aside and give it to BlackRock because it's different, not special, just different. Um, it is actually investing a little bit broader than just tech and putting in consumer discretionary names, which the average investor would consider tech anyways, like Alphabet, like Meta. Those are the names that are in uh, the BlackRock fund that aren't in the other two. The other two are pure play technology funds that are really just in like the Microsoft, the Apples, the NVIDIAs of the world. And they don't move away from the IT and uh, telecommunications sector. But if you look at the BlackRock one, they actually open it up a little bit so you can get some of those tech adjacent names like Meta, like Alphabet, like Amazon, things of the nature. So I'm going to give it to BlackRock just because it's the only one that is different. I like that. Also, tech adjacent names. That's pretty good, Shana. And uh, thank you for breaking that down, uh, those differences and uh, the lack of differences also between FTEC and VGT. Dave, you're up next. Break it down for us. How do you see it in exposure strategy? Well, Shane is coming in hot. I love it. I don't think I can. I don't think I can follow the the energy she's bringing on this one. But uh, I I kind of see the same thing. Uh, Fidelity and Vanguard are the same. Uh, cap weighted tech exposure, large cap tilted, no differences. Um, and again, IGM is really just tech plus communication services. There's really n nothing more to say. If you break it down at the individual holding, it's basically adding. Facebook, Google, Netflix, and it's lowering its uh, its weightings to Microsoft, Apple, and NVIDIA. That's really the only difference there is to it. So I guess in this category, if you're considering uh, something like IGM, I, I throw out the wild card QQQM. That's just the Invesco NASDAQ 100 ETF. If you just want Magnificent 7 exposure and heavy exposure to tech and uh like she said, tech adjacent stocks, I mean, you might as well just go with the index and, and save yourself a lot on cost because you're getting virtually the same exposure. So I guess in in this one, I'll call it a split between Fidelity and Vanguard just for the pure tech exposure. But yeah, if you want broader exposure, you can make an easy case for IGM. So that brings us next to performance. And uh, Dave, you're still up. So break it down for us. How do these three ETFs uh, look versus each other? Well, you probably won't be surprised to find out that performance is pretty much the same over the long term across all three of these funds. Uh, over the last 10 years, each of them has returned about 20% a year. Uh, Fidelity and Vanguard are, are pretty much right on par with each other, as you'd expect. IGM is really only different depending on the time frame you looked at you look at just based on whether communication services is outperforming or if it's lagging tech um, over the over the last year or so it's outperformed over the last three and five years tech is outperformed so you get some short-term performance differences there but again these are so closely tied to to the tech sector that over the long term, you're probably not going to see very meaningful differences in performance. So I'm just going to call it a three-way split decision. Again, Fidelity and Vanguard are, are the same thing, and IGM is just going to vary a little depending on, on which way the market's tilting at any given moment. Shana, you're up next. How do you see what, when it comes to performance? I agree. It's a split decision here. Um, the Fidelity and Vanguard fund basically have identical performance. There's slight differences at certain time periods, which is totally explained by the difference in the expense ratio and nothing more. They literally have the same 10 year number. They have the same one month number. Their year to date number is pretty similar. They're, 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 they're the same fund. Um, um, BlackRock is a little bit different. And as Dave pointed out, that has to do with the fact that it has some tech adjacent stuff in there, where when that is an area of a market that's doing well, it will do a little bit better. Um, more recently, um, it has a lower uh, allocation to NVIDIA. So it has underperformed because NVIDIA is 
killing it. And so the other two funds do better. But do keep in mind, the other two funds have like 50% of their holdings and four stocks. NVIDIA, Microsoft, Apple, and uh, what's the fourth one? Um, um, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, and yeah, those three um, are the primary holdings, like 50% of both of the Vanguard and Fidelity Fund. Uh, so, you know, you're getting a lot of exposure from, just from that. I agree with Dave. Like, there's a lot of reasons to just own something that's a little broader that, you know, is going to have that same exposure anyways. But overall performance, if you just look at it on these three uh, against each other, they're they're not that different. So it's a split decision. All right. Well, that takes us next to the mystery battle category. This is where our judges could give us a single factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. So Shana, what is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? So there's really nothing interesting to like hook into for any of these. I And I wish there was, and I wish I could have come up with a great wild card to throw in here, but you know, you'd have to kind of make a decision on where in tech you'd want to be. And I just didn't want to go down that rabbit hole. So I'm going to just kind of point out something that I think is interesting, maybe not something to win from, but something interesting, which is that the Fidelity and the Vanguard Fund are investing in an index that has some tax benefits um, through this um, I, this RIC, the revenue investment um and I, I don't know what BRIC stands for. I'm, I'm like looking here. Under the Internal Revenue Code, it has uh, specific um, requirements and guidelines as it relates to what kind of holdings it can have, percentages, and there's tax benefits. I'm pointing that out because that is interesting to me. And as a wild card, I would kind of look to that as something that stands out for tax sensitive investors, although I don't necessarily think that this makes them tax efficient so much as they have some tax benefit. Um, but yeah, there's there's something interesting there as it relates to the the, the way that the in, index that those two funds are using is constituted. Um, but, you know, do I think it's a reason to invest in either one of them that stands out? Not necessarily. It's just, you know, when I'm looking for wild card or uh, composition or whatever, like this is just stood out to me. Yeah. Okay. And that would obviously be something for investors holding this in a taxable investment account, those holding it in a tax deferred or tax free retirement account. Of course, that would be less of a factor to think about. But thank you for bringing up that uh, that particular point, Shana and uh, Dave, you're up next. What is your mystery battle category and uh, which of these three ETFs, if any, stands out? Well, within these three ETFs, there's not really much that stands out from each other. Um, you're basically, you know, getting the same thing with with all of them. But I, I guess the one thing that I will talk about here is valuations on tech stocks. Uh, if you look where these, uh, where the tech sector specifically stands right now, it's trading at about 28 times next 12 month earnings and about five or six times book value, and that's really expensive by historical standards. And you know that a lot of investors have been chasing these stocks and the sector. So you probably have a lot of people that are really overweight in a sector that's really expensive at the moment. So I think if you're thinking long-term, you have to think about taking some risk off the table and maybe diversifying away from a sector that's uh, really kind of overtaking the market. So uh, I'm going to throw out a wild card. I'm going to go way off the radar here, and I'm going to throw out SPLV, which is the Invesco S&P 500 low vol ETF. And I bring that up just as uh, kind of a diversifier for tech heavy portfolios. This is uh, a fund that, you know, obviously just looks at more defensive, more conservative stocks. So you're going to have more consumer staples and uh, some of the cyclicals like financials will be in there. And utility stocks and things like that. SPLV only has about 10% of its weight combined in tech and communication services. So it's really a good counterbalance if you have uh, any of these funds or really any tech fund and uh, specifically in your portfolio. If you don't necessarily want to sell it for tax purposes, you can at least add something that kind of offsets the risk and diversifies a little bit. So uh, again, within these three funds, there there's, again, no difference. So I, I'll just throw out SPLV as a way to kind of diversify your portfolio if you want to do that. 
All right, so we've moved to the part of the program where our judges can give us their overall pick. And how will this go down? Oh, my goodness. I don't know. The world's most boring ETF battle ever, according to Shana. So, Dave, give us your final choice. Yeah, it, it's a split decision between Fidelity and Vanguard because, you know, as we've mentioned several times, it's the same fund. Uh, if you want to split hairs on expenses, you can choose Fidelity, but at two basis points for a sector in which stocks are, you know, going up and down 5% a day. I'm, I'm not sure two basis points is a, is a real difference. But again, I guess I'll just point out that it's really kind of what you're looking for within tech. If you want to expand into, you know, Alphabet and Facebook and and things like that, then you could go with IGM. Uh, again, I would prefer QQQM in that case because you're getting essentially the same thing, uh, much cheaper. But Within just tech-specific exposure, uh, might, might as well just you know go with the index, keep it cheap, and uh, and you can go with either Fidelity or Vanguard. In this case, they're you know interchangeable. Shana, your final chance to weigh in. What's your overall winner? Yep, world's most boring ETF battle ever. Um, I agree with Dave. Split decision between Fidelity and Vanguard. Both pure play tech, passive, low cost. You're gonna get exactly what you expect from both of them. Highly concentrated though, which is not great, uh, but the BlackRock Fund's just so ridiculously expensive for no reason. So I can't give them any credit here uh, for it. I wish I could come up with a fun wild card, another suggestion. There's so many interesting tech funds out there where you can get really specialized with like cybersecurity, innovation, disruptors, just semiconductors, just things related to crypto and digital assets, so many other more interesting ways to play the tech sector. But in this case, you know, just three really boring funds, and I'm going to give it a split decision between Fidelity and Vanguard. Well, our judges have spoken, and uh, they have come to the conclusion that uh, today's winner is a split decision between FTEC from Fidelity and VGT from Vanguard. It's the same identical fund. So um, not much in the way to talk about as far as differences uh, in that regard. And our judges brought, brought that out. I would say the one thing that uh, might be slightly different, and I looked at the options chain for those of you selling, you know, any kind of options on either one of these e ETFs. I checked that on FTEC and VGT, pretty, pretty closely matched. I think VGT has slightly more volume, but Again, not anything in terms of wild differences in that regard either. Uh, for those of you trading options, just something to keep in mind. But uh, also, we, we did have some wild cards. We had QQQM, uh, which Dave mentioned, and then we had, had SPLV, which was uh, mentioned by Dave as a diversifier for tech-heavy portfolios. I thought that was a good nonlinear ETF battle suggestion. So take a look at your portfolio. You know, we've had some massive run-ups here over the past uh, year or so. And uh, many portfolios that have benefited from that have become concentrated. And so uh, the obvious solution to that risk concentration is, as our judges mentioned, take some off the table, diversify, redeploy that capital into maybe some other areas or other ETFs with less concentration risk. Judges, any final points that you'd like to, to make uh, on today's program? Any other observations? Shana, I'll, I'll let you uh, begin and then we'll end with Dave. Well, I like to stir the pot. Come on, folks, give us something interesting. This was the most boring ETF battle I've ever participated in. And I would <laughs> like for you guys to get a little spicy and give me something more fun to do so they can learn something. Cause this was not it folks. All right. Come up with something better. Let's challenge the audience. Dave, any final uh, thoughts? No, I can't top that. Nor will I try. That was good. <laughs> you don't want to get any hate mail. Come on, man. I specialize in that. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm just going to sit here <laughs> off to the side. All right. Well, let us know in the comments section below what you thought about today's program. Do you agree with our judges? Give us your thoughts. Again, a huge thanks to Shane and Dave for the excellent analysis. We look forward to having you back on ETF Battles very soon. Thank you so much, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Good to see you. Well, that does it for today's show. 
Be sure to send us your ETF battle matchup request. Make it good. As Shana said, make it interesting. Give us something that's challenging, and uh, uh, that would definitely make for much better uh, fodder. Is it fodder or fetter? I can't I, – I lose – it's fodder, okay? Fetter is Eddie Fetter. No, no, that's Eddie Vetter with the Pearl Jam. So it's fodder. But my point is, is give us something good. We could do double, triple, or quadruple headers. So just give us your ticker symbols in the comment section below. Be sure to also visit the description section. We've got research links to our judges along with our program sponsor direction. And a big thanks again to Grossero Media for today's battle suggestion. I'm Ron DeLegge. Thanks for watching ETF Guide. We'll see you next time.